coming up next on Access Framingham TV, Switzerland and Paris, with my guest, Neil Kalkarni. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to Travels with Jack. I'm your host, Jack Barron. We hope you enjoy seeing the world with my guests and myself. Why don't you join me? If you would like to be my guest and share with our audience a recent trip, a vacation, a cruise, maybe a day trip right here in New England, we would love to have you talk about your trip. The transportation, the flight, the hotels, the shopping, the great food you enjoyed, the people that you met, anything you'd like to share with your friends and our viewing audience. Just contact us here at Access Framingham TV and let us know you'd like to be a guest. You can phone AFTV at 508-875-5434 or you can send an email message to info at accessfram.tv. Our associate producer will be in touch with you to make arrangements for you to be on our show here on Access Framingham TV. Today my guest is Neil Kalkarni. In July 2011, along with two friends, Neil visited both Switzerland and Paris, France. Welcome to Travels with Jack, Neil. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Aren't you nice? Uh, Neil is originally from Mumbai, India. He went to college at the U of M, also known as University of Mumbai in India. For those of you who are Michigan fans, he's not a Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> he had his, got his master's degree here in uh, the United States at Rutgers University in New Jersey in electrical and computer engineering. He went to work out of the university for Deutsche Bank in uh, equity portfolio analysis. And then he moved on to a Massachusetts company, uh, MathWorks, where he's currently a quality engineer and he's involved in creating math software for researchers, students, industry and finance and all kinds of other entities who need mathematically uh, aligned software. Uh, he moved to Framingham recently in April 2012. Uh, he's a bachelor. And a uh, couple of personal things, Neil is an avid photographer and loves to travel. So that's what the pictures are he's going to share with us today. And uh, he loves, he told me when he travels, he loves to educate himself on world issues and views from different nations, different peoples which is something all of our guests find in common. Um, he is uh, sharing Switzerland and France from a 2011 trip uh, with uh, two friends that he went to University of Mumbai with. And uh, he is also an avid sportsman. He plays in the MathWorks Premium Cricket League. I don't know if they sell uh, t-shirts, but you can but order me one. You do have t-shirts. You do have t-shirts, okay. Tell the big bosses I want a t-shirt. Uh, he also is a soccer and tennis player. And he shared with me he's a fantasy football player and a big New England Patriots fan. So I said, with all those credentials, I says, what a great guest we can have here today. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your trip to uh, France and how did you get there? Where did you start? Where did you meet the friends? Give me a little details. Uh, so it was interesting. One of my friends was going to Russia for a conference, and then we had a thought, why not meet up in a place that is central from in between U.S., Moscow, India, and London. So my friend was from Mumbai. The other one was from London, and I was flying out from New York. So the best place to meet was uh, in Europe somewhere. 
and Switzerland is quite popular and it's supposedly very beautiful. So we thought, why not just meet up in Switzerland? And that's how the plan turned out to be. And it was a great trip and we enjoyed a lot. So you started out, you flew from what, JF Kennedy so Airport? So I flew from JFK to Paris and uh, I stayed for one day in Paris. Uh, had a look around, to, uh, went to Eiffel Tower, Montmartre, and then I took the TGV. I, I'm a oh, big fan of the train. train. Yes. Okay. I'm a big fan of trains, so I took. I wanted to travel on the fastest train. Not that it is the fastest in the world right now, but it is quite fast. So I took the TGV from Paris to Geneva. How long did that take? It's three and a half hours. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Yes. So same as Boston to New York. Yes. So it goes a little faster than Aracella. Yes. Okay. And that's the best. I think that's something interesting about Europe that in three and a half hours, you're just in a different country. Here you are in a different state. And maybe if you're in Texas, you're not even in a different state. <laughs> that's right. So what do you think of that train? The team? Did you like it? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like I was very impressed with the technology and the overall service in the train. And Europe is, I think, very well connected with trains. So, yes, they are. So it's it's so much easier to travel. Our executive producer, Bill, is involved in uh, selling train tickets uh, internationally oh. and a, a lot of European trains he was yeah. active in. And the best part is they provide you with a Eurorail pass. So you can just use that to travel anywhere in the Europe. And once so you did get... you buy a Eurorail pass? Yes, oh, you I did. did. Yeah. Now and you I... bought that here. Uh, yes, you can buy it here or you can just buy it at a train station in either of the countries. So you could buy it in either Paris or Geneva or any of the bigger stations in Switzerland. And with that pass, you can go all through Europe? Yes. I mean, it depends on what kind of pass you buy. I mean, it has certain restrictions, but most of them let you travel across Europe on most of the trains. Great. That is, that's that's a yes. very nice, advantageous thing yes. that I know a lot of the European train companies offer. Yes. And if you're a student, you get special discounts. So, so you, even even at your age, you're still a student, of course. So when, uh, so <laughs> I, when I went... I tell them I'm a student. <laughs> uh, the age there for students is 25. So, oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I, I just made it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you met in Geneva. Yep. And so you started... Uh, Checked in a hotel. What did you do for accommodation? So, so basically, we then stay in Geneva. I went to Geneva, and the, the, after I just uh, landed from the train, the best thing they do there is there's a locker facility available at the station, so you can just put in your luggage in the lockers. Yep. You can roam around the city, come back, take your luggage, and go back to wherever you are. Okay. So we actually were staying in Luzon in a youth hostel. So And how far is that from Geneva? So Luzon is... Uh, by train around two and a half to three hours away. Oh, so you were quite a ways from Geneva. Yes. So the Luzon is kind of central okay. in Switzerland. So we uh, decided to stay in Luzon and then travel to all the places around because it was uh, equidistance from most of the places approximately. So what we did was we went to Lake Geneva. Oh, okay. And uh, there's a huge fountain there, which is supposedly the world's tallest that's what they say. I'm not sure if that's true. Will you be sharing a photo of that? Sure, yes. Good. So will, when we get to the photographs, uh, be, you'll point that a, out. There'll be a picture of Lake Geneva. Wonderful. And uh, so it's, it's a very beautiful lake. And it was a, a nice walk around the lake. And in the evening, it's quite beautiful with the restaurants and the coffee shops around. Oh, they have a lot of uh, restaurants around the yes. lake. Yes. And oh, okay. the, there are a lot of coffee shops. So you can just sit there and enjoy the evening uh, there at the lakeside, and it and you can see like all the the watch brands are. Oh really? Just well, we're gonna have there. some photos shortly, so you'll be sure to point those out. So sure. oh, they promote all the watches. Yes. So and did you get a watch while you were there? Uh, I have a Swatch which I got from Switzerland. Oh okay, is, good. It, it's nice. always fun, you know. Something. I'm a little older than you. And it's always fun as you go through life, you'll have a particular thing you bought in a country and you always look at it and say, gee, I got that, you know, such and such. And it brings back your fond memories of the location. Yes. So uh, even though some of the, you know, things, well, here's a map. So you started in France. Yes, I started in Paris, which is closer to Geneva. It's on the, the, the eastern side of France. Uh, and 
that's and the Geneva is exactly on the bar, like very close to the border. So it was a, a quick ride from France to Geneva, comparatively three and a half hours. And this is actually Bern, the capital of Switzerland. So let's. I I wanted to start off with the capital of the countries, and it's a it's a very beautiful place, and it's a it's a world heritage uh, city. It's one of the uh, dedicated as world heritage cities, so it's very beautiful. And this is the the church uh, there, and we actually it's a very beautiful church. So we were just uh, sitting there in the afternoon and just uh, relaxing there. Oh, look at the cobblestones, a beautiful little yes. center. The paved pavements are very beautiful. And this and, is all in Bern. Yeah, this is all in Bern. And this is where we were sitting in an afternoon just relaxing. And it was a beautiful climate. It was drizzling, but it was not very chilly. And it was uh, actually a very beautiful day. So you can see the pavements. It's it's quite beautiful. This is the old market area in Bern. And there are a lot of, uh, actually, this is where even uh, Albert Einstein stayed in one of the houses in this lanes really yes everything so, looks very kept up well yes it's a very clean beautifully maintained yes. country switzerland uh, is very clean and these are the old monuments uh, describing their soldiers and warriors and this is these are my two of my friends these i can't get a close look but it looks yes. like two lady friends yes oh so <laughs> so it was a very exciting trip for you you can say that <laughs> okay <laughs> i should have asked you that i didn't know and the foliage looks great yes it was uh the season was great and these are the fountains which are ongoing in between the the government buildings and this this is where they house their most of their their government offices out of the capital city and it's it's quite beautiful here this too. says something about uh, confederation of heritage yes this is a government building you think or could this have been a museum or something uh, this is actually uh, i think a part government building and part museum because oh, okay. it is an uh, old heritage structure but uh, most of these old heritage structure buildings actually house government offices too. I don't know exactly which one does what, but there are a few out there. And this is the, the old market place. And you'll find shops from all the Swiss watch brands and all the Swiss, uh, Swiss knives and the Swiss specific items here. And it's quite beautiful to just take a walk here and see how it is. it is. These are like small shops, but they are very well maintained and very beautiful to look at. And uh, this is actually Luzon. Oh, okay, which you had mentioned to me earlier. Yes, okay. so this is where we were staying and there's actually a lake uh, in Luzon. I mean, there are so many lakes in Switzerland, but this is one of the, the famous lakes in Luzon. And uh, there, there is a wooden bridge here, you'll see in one of the pictures. And there is a wooden bridge and watchtower. And this is the picture from that. This is the area where they have all the nightclubs and the cafes. And this is a picture from that wooden bridge. And you, at night, you can see it's beautifully lit. And it's in uh, very nice. Do you remember nice... what kind of food you had uh, in the cafes there? Uh, yes, uh, I had uh, uh, the Swiss Hilermoos. I don't know how, how its exact pronunciation is, but it's called the Hilermoos. That's what I think. Okay. It's made up of Swiss cheese and I don't know exact ingredients, but it's some. It is. Uh, it has a substantial amount of Swiss cheese in it. Okay. That's what I feel. And eggs and I don't know what else. But it was uh, Hilermoos and uh, the other one where actually we had the uh, smoked, uh, actually smoked chicken. Oh really? Yeah. And it was pretty good. I had never had it was smoked chicken with pineapple in a wrap, and it was uh, very interesting. I never had it before. Yeah, no, the food uh, all through Europe, I, I find all the countries, the food is very different. Mm -hmm. But you'll find uh, as you return, of course, France, you, well, when we get there, you'll tell us about the food there, but it's yes. always wonderful. Yes, I like it. 
Yeah. And your friends, did they enjoy their... Well, this is where now? Yeah. This is the, the water tower and the wooden oh, bridge. Oh, you mentioned the water tower. Yes, and the wooden bridge. And this is uh, uh, what I had read before going. This is one of the oldest covered bridges in Europe. So it was a... Uh, it is a very beautiful sight in the evening, especially. It's, it looks nice. Yeah, it's, it's now this wooden bridge. The cars can go on. It's just no. Walking. It's it's just walking. Pedestrian. And this this is not even like across the whole whole lake. It just goes to that water tower you can see there. Uh, the building on your left, that's the tower you see. That's their water tower, uh, and uh, that's the the wooden bridge. Actually, has paintings depicting uh, different oh, uh, really uh, historic. Uh, uh, so it's almost like a gallery. Yes. Isn't and, that interesting? And it it is actually lined by flowers on both the sides. We have that in Massachusetts, you know. When you go through any of our tunnels over to Logan Airport, yeah. the dirt makes different uh, <laughs> designs on the walls. Yes. So it's, you know, yeah. it's kind of an artistic thing. And there are covered bridges in New Hampshire and Vermont, too. So I... <laughs> I had been there in one of the fall seasons to actually take uh, two rough covered bridges then, which is very beautiful. I, I hope Massachusetts gets some of them. <laughs> we, I think we have a few covered bridges in Massachusetts, but um, uh, I don't know if we're quite as uh, clean with our bridges <laughs> as they are in Switzerland. We're yeah. trying. We're trying. Yes. <laughs> And this is the old Swiss house. This is where? This is in Lucerne. So this is this okay, was where we were staying. Okay. This is where we were. I mean, the, we were staying. The youth hostel was very close to this place. Tell uh, me a little bit about the youth, youth hostel. Expensive, inexpensive? How would you have considered uh, so, the rate? So I think youth hostel is the, the most, uh, I think, uh, efficient way of staying if you're not traveling with your girlfriends uh, okay. or your wife. Or if you don't need like a lot of privacy, I think if you're traveling with friends, I think it's one of the best places to stay because you meet people from different countries. You make so a lot of socially friends. Socially, it was fun. Yes. You make a lot of friends. You start hanging out with them and they tell you about different places which you have not planned to visit. So you can actually oh figure out, oh, somebody tells you, oh, this is a nice place. You should go there. And that's not in your itinerary, but you say, oh, let's try this. And then you go there and you there's a chance you'll and like the, it a and lot. And the pricing, do you remember any idea what kind of money you so have spent? So I spent like uh, 30, 30 Swiss francs per night there, which is 30 or 35, which was quite cheap uh, compared to the hotel. Any idea of conversion, Swiss franc to a dollar? Swiss franc to a dollar is like one point, that time it was one point six dollar, uh, $1.6 to one Swiss franc. So Swiss franc is more expensive than a dollar. Yes. So it's $1.6 that time to a so it was about forty five dollars. Yes, it cost you per night. Per night, and that was uh, a single, or you were with your friends in the same room. How did so, they do that? So the uh, so we got actually lucky in uh, Switzerland because uh, they gave us a room with like we were three of us, and they gave us a room with four. But the the fourth bed they didn't allow to anyone. So okay. you so kind of we had a so room for us. You uh, had your own room, room. For, but you use what a central bathroom? Yeah, there's a, the the bathroom is shared. Like, okay, that's the only thing. The bathroom is that's shared. That's okay. You know, but, when you're twenty five, you have different. Um, uh, demands. Yes. Then, uh, as somebody who's probably a little bit older, Old. or with with, with family, a, with or, a family, or, or with a spouse, yeah. or uh, significant other, whatever. Yes. Your, your needs are a little different. Oh, yeah. great! So for forty five dollars, and I would have to imagine in Switzerland, hotels had to be a minimum two fifty. Yeah, they, they are quite expensive. So yes. hotels actually anything that's like close to the the train station would cost you close to like $200 a night or minimum minimum and that to like uh, not the best one like that's like a kind of a motel but I don't know what they call it there yeah but it's something like that but youth hostel like I have a membership with uh, now this is your old employer Deutsche Bank yes that and, must be why you took the picture <laughs> yes <laughs> that's the time I used to work for them and I was uh, very surprised uh, or not so very surprised to see them there so, and they have a lot of retail banking in, uh, uh, in Europe. In Switzerland? Oh, yeah. all through. Yes, they're so, a big bank. Yeah, so you can actually, they're more into retail banking there and investment banking here. Than, than here in the U.S.? U.S., they're not into retail banking. Yeah. And this is my friend. She was actually a big fan of Coop. The sandwiches, the Coop sold. The Coop is like uh, uh, 
Tesco in London or here it's like more like stop and shop okay. or something like that. But uh, they sell actually food also and their sandwiches are pretty good. Oh, all right. So, so that's why this picture, which she loved having food there. And uh, this is actually from uh, Zurich. So, Zurich, Zurich always looks wonderful. And these buildings, of course, are hundreds of years so, old. And the, the, Did the, you take that terrific trolley car in Zurich? Uh, I actually didn't take the trolley car, but I took uh, another walking tour of Zurich. It was uh, quite interesting and to see all the, the old buildings with clocks over them. And Zurich is a quite happening place, I should really? say. Really? Yeah. The nightlife in Zurich is supposed to be very good. I mean, it's one of the best in Switzerland. Really? Okay. Yes. They have good bars, pubs, and clubs. So it's it's pretty nice. And uh, this is like, you can see like the watch manufacturers having advertising like Rolex. All. And this is actually from Luzon. So if you take it's a, a nice-looking building, this is a uh, probably what an apartment house, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm not sure what it is. Or but a hotel, it, maybe it's the Bukhara Hotel. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, the, this is again from Zurich. So Zurich is quite beautiful, and uh, this is near the Zurich Lake. This is a boat. Yeah, this on is a cruise lake. actually on the Zurich Lake. Did you take that? Uh, I took the another one that's called the steamer. Okay. And we'll have a picture of it coming somewhere. It's a big lake. Yeah, it's it's massive. Yes. It's it's like I thought I mean it's it's like going to something like Lake Michigan or something. <laughs> it's, you just can't see the other end and you think it's kind of a sea there. And it has waves that are that can challenge some of the oceans. So I've seen like big waves coming out of the the there's a great picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water, it does, it looks pretty, oh, there. Yeah. And they have fountains over most of the lakes, which is pretty interesting to see. Uh, the mountains in the background. Uh, yes, and clocks are everywhere in Switzerland. And this is one of the old churches with their windows have a special kind of uh, glass painting on them. The stained glass. Yeah, the stained glass painting. See, coming from... Uh, Mumbai, yes, you don't have a lot of Christian churches. Uh, a few, actually, we do. Really? Oh, yes. Actually, since it was a British colony, we actually have a lot of uh, churches around. So where I grew up, actually, there's a uh, one of the Asia's oldest church, very close to my place where I grew up. It's called the Portuguese Church. Okay. And it's a, and it's a very beautiful church. And I have I had friends who are Christians, and I have been there on Christmas Eve. And it's it's very nice, and I when I was a kid, my father used to take me there for to see the Christmas decorations. Oh, so you had a little familiarity with churches. Yes, because I was going to say Europe has fabulous churches. Yes, and also that the some of the old architecture in Mumbai is British and old medieval style architecture, which I mean you can in Switzerland it's all of it, and it's very beautiful. I love that kind of architecture. So it's very interesting. So this is the marketplace uh, near Zurich. Uh, these are again the watch towers. I mean the yeah, towers. Yeah, you're watches. right. They all have clocks on them. them. So that's that's one of the interesting observations I had in Zurich that all the tall buildings have uh, clocks on them, and also their government has a regulation that they don't allow to build like very tall buildings so everything has to be a limit limit and then it they maintain Throughout their skyline the country you found that limit or just in the main uh, the cities area? i visited most of them have this limit in geneva you have some a few tall buildings but they are not like very tall because so. you know we have in washington dc i don't know if you're aware of that uh, you can't build a building higher than i believe the uh, uh, washington, washington monument. monument yeah i just saw the documentary on Washington Monument on my flight back. I was visiting uh, India for a vacation this time and I just watched a History Channel documentary on Washington Monument when I just realized that why DC doesn't have very tall buildings. It's, it's right. And I think even Paris, well, Paris has certain sections yeah. with a lot of high rise, but uh, near, Eiffel, near the they Eiffel, they're not yeah. tall. Yeah, they want to see the Eiffel from everywhere in that part of the city. 
And this, this is, is back in Zurich. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Lake Zurich. Uh, I think it's it's called one of. I mean, there are a lot of lakes, but this is the the most famous one. And you can actually go and take a boat ride inside the lake. And there's a there's a big steamer also. This is I clicking a picture and my friend trying to read a map <laughs> and trying to figure out where we are supposed to go. And I was trying to click a picture using my. Is Isabella. she an engineer too? Uh, yes. Oh, so she'd be okay reading a map. Yes, I, right. I hope so. <laughs> and this is uh, actually at. Oh, look! Actually, this is a yeah. canal of some kind. Yeah, this is I I I am sure this is close to uh, Bern. Oh. And uh, I like the trains. Paris, uh, uh, Switzerland has one of the best train networks I have ever seen. It's really? like they're always on time, and it's it's That's why they have the clocks. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's called it's called I mean I think it's called the Swiss accuracy, and the trains are like really good, and they have like fancy trains. So yeah, this looks pretty fancy. Yeah, and it's very interesting to travel in the train. So once you get a, the the, there's a Swiss pass also, which is different from a Eurorail pass. Okay. And using that, you can travel in most of the trains in Switzerland. And it's like a one-time payment, and then you can travel everywhere, almost everywhere. So you didn't feel a need to rent a car or anything. You felt the public transportation is was very suitable. It's excellent. It's so well connected by public transportation, and they run till late in the night. So you never really? actually have to drive. Very few people actually have seen their drive. Most of them take How public transport. How do you transport. feel safety-wise in Switzerland? Uh, I felt very safe. I never actually felt that it was uh, it was unsafe. Uh, which is in contrast to Paris, where I almost got my wallet flicked. Oh, really? Yes, while getting into a train, which was very crowded. So, so uh, I think Switzerland was very, very safe. I didn't have to bother much. You know, I, I don't remember. Well, go ahead. This is um... this is Rhine Falls, which is uh, the European version of Niagara Falls, I guess. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> that's 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 their that's called the big. I mean, it is actually the biggest falls in Europe. So, oh, it is okay. So that's why I said that's their version of Niagara Falls there, and uh, a lot of people actually visit it as a tourist attraction. And what is up on the top there? Is that a chapel of some kind? Uh, it's actually used to be a palace for one of their kings. Oh, really? I, okay. I think that, and the, you can actually go there and visit that place. It's quite beautiful, and there's a restaurant next to it, which has a very nice view of the of falls. The falls. So you can enjoy your lunch, having a look at the falls. So this is the restaurant. And uh, this now is, the uh, train looks what two two it's, levels? Yeah, it's a two. It's a double decker train. So they have different kinds of trains, and it's uh, it's very interesting. And they are actually they look very beautiful, and some of the trains actually have pantry cars and bars in them so you can actually buy a have lunch, lunch and... buy a drink and uh, internally also they are very well maintained uh, this is uh, from zurich and this is another covered bridge uh yes no actually this is from Luzon, and this is uh actually around lake zurich yeah this is Luzon. This is the same water tower one. This is you had very good weather, it looks like. Yes, I was lucky. I found most yeah. of the days it was sunny. So Yeah, I'm looking it, at all your uh, your pictures and I'm saying, boy, he had good weather. Oh, so this is taken from, this. Pic the previous picture was taken from the part where you saw those lights and the, yep. I told you restaurants and bars were there. That's where this was taken. And this is from uh, Lake Zurich, where we were just waiting for the ride in that steamer. And this is from Bonn. This is an old uh, scooter called uh, Lambretta, and uh, it is uh, it's an old brand. And I was uh, very happy to see it, and it's it was so well maintained. It seemed like as good as it was new. You don't find this uh, very often. This is actually in. This was this is from Paris. This is a place called Oshi in Paris. 
and there's a pirate ship there. So this is the view from the Rose Garden in Bern, wherein you actually have a beautiful view of the city. It's on a hill and uh, there is actually a restaurant on the hill. So uh, that's this is the view from that restaurant. So th it's called the Rose Garden and there's at the lower level, there's a botanical garden. Oh, and then really? you climb- I think a, I remember that. And then you climb a few hundred stairs to go to the, the Rose Garden at the top. And this is the view of Bern, which is, which is mesmerizing, I would say. Yeah, it looks, everything's very close. Yes, it's it's quite densely populated. Yes, I was going to say it looks densely, but it is it is if you walk through the lanes, it is so so well arranged and well designed that you never feel that it's crowded. Actually, when you're walking through the lanes, did you have an opportunity to speak with a lot of the Swiss people? Uh, not a lot of them, but a few of them I met in the train, and while just asking for directions. And, and they were quite were friendly. Were they friendly good? Uh, they're, they're very friendly, actually. Uh, they helped you a lot. Like once I actually missed a train, and that was the last train to where I was going. But oh then boy. there was an, <laughs> another person who actually had, uh, he actually checked us on his phone with the internet and told me like, oh, there's another connecting train. So you go to this station and then travel back to where you want to go. So you have to like hop on and hop off at a few stops, but you'll reach where you want to. And See, is, those are the things that your generation takes for granted. Yes. That uh, for me, when we used to miss a train, we missed it. But today you can get on your cell phone and, you know, Check the internet and Google or Bing and yes. figure out how the hell you're going to get there. Yes. So actually, my my phone was actually not working there with the internet because uh, uh, it didn't. Uh, the US uh, AD and didn't have coverage. Like, with oh, the local, really? It didn't have the right type with the local uh, uh, provider there. Uh, so I had to ask someone else to actually let me know what it was going, and it was late in the night so there were like very few people two or three on the whole station so i just went and asked one of them and he was quite friendly and helpful so it was a very nice experience stuff no it's nice when people help you out i, I find really wherever i've gone i i don't remember anyone being particularly unfriendly or any country that was unfriendly yes. um you know it's amazing uh how most people are accommodating yes and it's actually very nice to look at that. And you, you actually always listen to news and you don't see people being friendly. But when you actually travel, most other times they are quite friendly. I know it. The uh, Now this looks like snack yeah. time. Yes, this is actually at the top of the Rose Garden in Bern from where you saw the pictures taken. Yep. And it was a little bit chilly and it was raining. I mean, it was drizzling, not raining. And then it was... an very nice time to have a cappuccino topped with uh, some cream and it was and it looks so like they sprinkled with a little swiss chocolate yes and they had a very nice uh, swiss sandwiches with smoked uh, chicken and uh, swiss cheese so it was quite uh, quite a nice uh, lunch to have or a brunch to have now are these the alps we're looking at uh, Yes, okay. these are over uh, Lake Zurich. Yeah, and they're beautiful, like snow-covered peaks with uh, clouds. It is, it's like out of a postcard. Yes, it looks really mesmerizing. So this is actually water, and the water actually reaches up to the mountains and the background with snow-covered peaks. Yeah, this is the steamer ship. I was talking about this is a very beautiful ride you can actually take around the lake yes and the lake has like waves like sea which i was <laughs> talking about before you can see how huge the waves are that that steamer is really big and this these are the gardens on the other side of the lake lovely yes and this is the steamer ship and if anybody is visiting, I would recommend that they take this the ride and the steamer. It's it's an old steamer, so it is a, a it's kind of an heritage ship they have maintained, and they actually give a ride. So this is just uh, sitting at the lake in the evening, and this is the pier where you can actually board the the ship. 
just great, great photos. Yes, I love taking pictures. So I was... Uh, now this is what, snow. July, correct? Yes. And yet there's plenty of snow on the top of the mountains. Oh, yes. Uh, if I went to Jungfrau Watch, I don't think I have pictures of that in this one. But that's the highest peak in Europe and it's always snow covered. Always snow covered. Yes. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a beautiful, actually at the base of Jungfrau Watch is, uh, I think it's called Jungfrau, if I'm pronouncing it correct. And at the base of it is a city called Interlaken. Oh, yes. And Where they it, had the Olympics many years ago. Yes. And it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Really? Yes. It's, it's, and it's very rich, elite, and beautiful. You can see all the fancy cars, Porsches um, parked on the road. And it is very beautiful. You mean you don't see all those fr driving from Framingham to Natick to go to work? You don't see all the... Actually, I see a few ones parked in my parking lot. Oh, okay. Where I work. <laughs> <laughs> but those, there were a lot of fancier ones there, like Ferrari. I know. It amazes me, you know, when you travel, like, uh, for certain cities, Los Angeles, you'll see a lot of yes. all the fancy cars, Ferraris and yeah. Lamborghinis and... All those fancier ones. Like I was in Dubai for a vacation when I went to India this time for 10 oh, days. Oh, you'll have to bring your pictures of Dubai. Sure, I will. <clears throat> and I saw all the fancy cars from like Ferraris to yep. Maseratis. And but they're they like drive implanted. so fast in Dubai. I get nervous. They, uh, what are they, eight lane roads sometimes? Yes, it's I six think? lane roads in the city. It was quite interesting there. And they drive pretty fast. Yes. Mm. Yeah, this, is, this is where you board that steamer ship. Oh. And this is where it was. Uh, everyone was so excited, so we were taking pictures, jumping, and you can see the background wherein it was like the clouds were creating a kind of a picture where you can see the there's, there are rays coming out of the clouds, and it matches with your jump. We're trying just photography tricks. Look and at this beautiful. Yeah, this is uh, this is close to Geneva. And is that a hotel or? I, I think it's some kind of a government building because you can see the Euro flag there. Oh, yes. Yep. So I, I assume it's some kind of a government building. You can see the Swiss flag, the, the European Union flag, and there's one more flag, which I'm not aware what it is. And this is someone enjoying his yacht in the, in the lake. And that, that actually is a wave behind that and you can see the, the mountains. So you can see that large wave coming in. Yep. So it's, it's, the lake has huge waves. So I was very surprised to see large waves in the lake where you can actually go and surf on them. Well, I'm trying to think. Does Mumbai have um, any lakes near there or anything? I know, of course, it's on the ocean. Yes. Uh, there is only one lake, which is in the, in the southern part of Mumbai. Okay, but it's very small, and it's and the other lakes are like for basically drinking water, which you will find in the, in the in between the western and the eastern suburbs. Okay, but uh, but not uh, they are not tourist attractions. There's no. a, yeah, the only one in the south southern part of Mumbai is, but uh, even I have been there in my twenty one years there, four times. So it's, it has a temple close to it, and it has a festival around it. Uh, I think it's in sometime in October. But this architecture curse is so different than what you're used to. Yes, and this but, is like very beautiful. It's medieval, and it's, I was very, very impressed. Yeah, no, it looks absolutely um, storybook pictures. Yes, this is how they, you see in movies or... In pictures, I think in India, Switzerland is very famous because uh, in the 90s and like early 2000s, all the movies used to get shot, like all the Bollywood movies in Switzerland used to be the, the happening place for every movie to go there. So it's quite famous oh, in they India. they filmed the Bollywood movies uh, there. there. Yeah. So they'll have at least a song sequence or some kind of plot there just to actually... So Switzerland is very famous in Bollywood for some reason, and that's why it's quite popular in India. So everyone knows about Switzerland there because of the movies. Isn't that this? So yeah. in other words, when you said, let's go up, oh, well, we're going to go on to Paris. Yeah. This, of course, is uh, the, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower. So I wanted to click one at the night from a different angle because you see pictures from 
the normal angle. So this is just standing below the tower. And it is beautiful. This is at the station that takes you to this subway station that takes you to the tower. And it's actually very beautiful. The walls are lined with paintings as you walk through the walkway to the state train station. So it's quite well maintained. Now, where did you stay in Paris? So I stayed in a youth hostel there too. Again, now this is... Uh, this is actually uh, Champs-Élysées. That's their most famous street wherein they have the the shops for all the brands. It's like the, the shopping mecca. Oh, and this is the at Louvre. the Louvre. Isn't that terrific? It looks like you're almost holding the... Yeah, that's, uh, that's who you're trying did, to trick. You were that. trying to play in that. Yeah. That looks great. So that's, did that's, you fix this after you took the picture? Or no. Is like, really how it ended up? No, this is like uh, you just stand there and you adjust the angle of the camera to take that picture. Wow. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that actually difficult, but it's, it's just fun to do this. And Louvre is a very beautiful place. Beautiful museum. Absolutely. Especially in the evening, it looks totally mesmerizing with the, the lake and the fountains. And there's a restaurant that's on the one of the sites, and it's 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 absolutely beautiful to have a dinner there, and have a look at the Louvre at night with the fountains around and the the lake. It is, it's, and yeah. and the Eiffel Tower has a just in, if you go back to Paris, has a wonderful restaurant. If my memory serves me correct, I think it's called the Jules Verne. Okay. And uh, wonderful food. You dine up there and you can look out over Paris and yeah. uh, uh, very it, special. Is the same place where they have the champagne bar or it's that the different one? I'm, I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but uh, I remember dining there and it was really very good food, nice uh, selection and just delightful to look out over it, you know, because it's a big park around the Eiffel Tower. Yes. And uh, maybe we might have a few pictures of that park. It's it's quite beautiful. That park is like very well maintained. Yes, I saw somebody taking their after wedding photographs there. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean it's. I think it's quite famous for people after wedding they come there to click a few pictures. Could be. I don't know. I remember. Um, I I saw like two or three couples there after just after wedding that come there and with professional photographers and getting. It could pictures be because it's a lovely scene. Yes, it's very nice. And the backdrop of Eiffel. And this is from Montmartre. So if you go to Montmartre, uh, this is from the top of the hill. Now, there's a great church also. Did you go into that church at the top of Montmartre? Yes. And that's also, uh, that's, oh, look at these shots. These yeah. Again, you, you would you have perfect weather the whole trip? Uh, I was just lucky to have sunny weather all throughout. Except I go, the, I get rain. <laughs> <laughs> except the time I went to the top of Eiffel. This is like just a few minutes before it got really cloudy and the temperatures dropped down to, say, 50s. And I was wearing shorts, so it was, uh, I had to click some quick photographs. This is, of well. course, the River Seine. Yes. And these are some of the boats you can take trips up and down the Seine. Yeah, Seine is also very beautiful. It's like taking trips over Thames. And yes. And this That's is the, a great shot. This is the, I think, the cliched picture of Eiffel Tower. Yes, Tom. yes, but good. It's Those are the great pictures. And did you take the uh, elevator and go to the top of the yes, Eiffel? Yes, the, the other ones were clicked from the top of the Eiffel. Okay. You see the, the river that was clicked from the top. And this is the youth hostel where I was staying. Oh, this is where you stayed. It looks like yeah. quite a big place. Yes, it was. it is quite nice and it's big. Though it is actually in a suburb of Paris. So you have to take a train which is like 20 minutes off from the center of the city. Okay. 20, and how were the rates at this youth hostel? Oh, uh, this was actually even cheaper than Switzerland. Really? So it would be costing, say, close to $35 a night there. And it's a very nice place. The only uh, negative point about it would be it's a bit far away from the center, center of, of Paris. Paris. So, I mean, if you can find a youth hostel in close to the center of the Paris, I think that would be the best deal. But I was a member of this uh, Hosteling International uh, okay. Youth Hostel organization. So if I book through them, I get a discount.
and and they help you locate these hostels. Oh, they, they have a website where you, you can actually go and book a hostel with the number of beds you want and you can request for special rooms and i have used it in us quite a lot with my friends so we can actually if you're six of us we can actually book a room for all of us so it's like staying in a hotel if you go out so and it's cheaper that way and especially when the peak season is there there's a it's easier to find place there than in a hotel than the regular hotels yeah, this is the the breakfast area of that youth hostel. Oh, so they had a very a dining room area for you as yes. well. Yes, and so, they had a bar at the at the inside the oh, glass. So it was very very hotel like. Yeah, it's very hotel like. The only thing they that is it's a shared accommodation. Yeah. That's the only thing, and so I mean, if you don't mind that, if you're just on a kind of a leisurely trip with your friends, I think it's not a bad option. Now, what kind of breakfast did they serve there? Uh, it was a standard breakfast with uh, uh, fruits. Oh, okay. Uh, coffee, tea, uh, sandwiches, and croissant. So and you were very. You'd say the the food was perfectly suitable for you every morning. Yes, I, I'm very flexible because it the can fruit. get expensive. I can recall going out for breakfast in Paris with my wife and children many years ago, and you know we could have a hundred dollar breakfast bill for oh yes coffee and croissants and a few you know in paris you can actually have a 500 hundred dollar breakfast I also think so. <laughs> and you can have a the ten dollar breakfast also but this is actually in youth hostels the breakfast is included in your price you really for, so yes. for your 35 dollars you got breakfast too yes oh okay. so if 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 some student is traveling i think it's the best thing for him to do i would agree with you so, and I was just out of my student life and I was meeting my friends from my undergrad. So it was now these fun. pictures we're looking at from Paris, is this before you went to Switzerland? I know you mentioned you were there for a day. Yes. Is this that day or, were the, or did you go back to Paris with your friends? So what I did was uh, I stayed there when I went there, I stayed there for a day. And yep. then after going for four days in Switzerland, I came back and stayed there for two days before I flew out of Paris. Okay. It's because I was flying. Did the girls come back with you to Paris? Yes. Oh, so they went with you. Okay. And uh, from Paris, we flew like one of the friends flight to London, the other one to Mumbai, and I flew, flew to JFK. Ah. So this is from Walmart, the church at the top. Yes. And it's a, it's a very beautiful sight, especially in the evenings when the city starts lighting up i remember know. that church it is it's a beautiful church a lot and of stairs though why do i remember climbing a lot of stairs yes it is on a hill so yeah and if you just walk down the street from here there's moulin rouge That's this is right. the yes and it's famous because of the movie that came and uh, this is uh one of the symbols on the door which i was very fascinated to see. The, this is just my friend gazing over the city. I think just the contrast, because of the contrast, we can't see the city behind. But it's a beautiful view from this uh, viewing point at the top. Is that your friend who lives in London? Uh, no, this is the friend that lives in Mumbai. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the, the picture from the, the bottom. And this is a street just across that leads to Montmartre. And there are some good crepe places here. You can get the crepes and I think how you pronounce them. It's crepe or crepe. Yes, yes. Crepe is perfect. And uh, some of the restaurants here sell very nice crepes. Yeah, no, I, um, I always, you know, notice in Paris, though, they do... Um, their streets are very, did you find them very clean? Yes. They wash the streets a lot at night and everything. I always found it to be a very well-maintained city. Yes, Paris is a well-maintained city. Yes. I mean, for the crowd it has, it's quite well-maintained. Like, What are some of the things you did at night in Paris? Did you kids go to clubs or anything? Uh, yes, actually, we had a at the bar at the bottom of the, the youth hostel itself. So yeah. we went there once. And once we actually went uh, to a a pub close to actually Champs Elysees. Okay. So I mean that was uh, just across the two streets across Champs Elysees, and it was very nice. At the but I I would say that the music they play in one of the 
clubs in Zurich is like I love house music, so they had like good house music and when you say clubs. house, what kind of music? The house music. Meaning, is that a particular style? Yeah, it's a style of music. It's it's kind of in between trance and I would say or I wouldn't say rock, but it's more like trance and dubstep. It's more like kind of a, a music with beats and longer uh, music, tonal streaks to it. I love music actually. So a little bit like jazz? Uh, it's not really. It's it's more, uh, it's faster. See, I'm going to get beat. letters now from the viewers complaining that I'm not up on <laughs> the latest in music, but so help so, me along. So this is more like if you go to a club or a disc, they would rather play uh, more. This, this is like more tonal, like it has high tones and more beats to it. So it will be more like, it's a, it's, it's more taking from hip hop and mixture of hip hop oh, okay. and trance. Okay. So, so hip hop and tr with trance. So I think if, uh, if you have viewers who are more knowledgeable than me in music, they would let you know something better than this. But that's what I feel it is. I love music, but I'm not very well. So in. these, like the club you went to in Paris with the house music. Was uh, that was in uh, Zurich, actually, the house music. Dancing as well? Yes. Oh, good. So it, it's, it's so good fun. So you had fun. a good time. Yes, it was fun times. And uh, I really enjoyed the trip. So it was. And really also in Paris, what about museums? Did you go through the Louvre? I saw you. Yes, we went to Louvre and I went and saw Mona Lisa and all the other pictures. And it was actually a very good experience. So this is outside Louvre after having a look at all the. And Louvre is really huge. So yes, it takes like at museum. least half a day to actually go through most of the. It's a magnificent museum, didn't you yes, think so? It is. And it has like so many paintings in it. It's just mind blowing to see so many paintings. Now, had either of the girls been to Paris before? Uh, oh, the other friend who stays in London, she had been to Paris before. Okay. So, so she did she invite you to London? She said, uh, Neil. Oh, actually, you've got I, to come to London. I have been to London on work for a few months uh, in 2010. Oh, okay. So I stayed in London for two two and a half months. Oh, so you were there quite a while. Uh, well, not two and a half yeah. a long it's, time. Yeah. This was for Deutsche Bank or for MathWorks? Deutsche Bank. Oh, okay. So I was on my training there for like one and a half, two months. At oh, least. wonderful. How did you like London? Uh, I like it a lot. It's quite similar to Mumbai because of the British architecture. And they drive on the same side as in <laughs> Mumbai. So. <laughs> And the buses are very similar. So really, so you could you you could see the British influence you grew up with. Yes, so from the that's mother the, country. <laughs> so that's that's all that was there, and I, I could drive on both the sides of the road. So it was uh, good fun, and I had a lot of friends that time there from my undergrad who were staying there, either working or studying. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was actually good to meet up with them, and I like. London a lot. It's it's a very nice city to stay, hang out, and have fun. Big drinking city. Yes, yeah. anything, any city in the Europe you can call them. No, but London, I always found my God, a big drinking city. Yeah, especially if you go to Covent Gardens, yeah. it's awesome. It's it's got. <laughs> well. So I would tell you this next time if you're there, go to this place called Dirty Martini. Okay, and uh, you'll. They have one of the widest collection of martinis, so you would have, you would enjoy this. Now back to Paris. So you went to the Louvre. Uh, what other museums do you remember? Uh, I went to Louvre, and uh, I also went to uh, the museum uh, that is next to the Hotel Royal. Uh, the muse, the Musée d'Orsay, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Music. Oh, yeah. So that's that's behind Louvre. Yep. As you walk through the hotel, you see in the the movies, the Bond movies and the other <laughs> movies. You're a good movie goer. Yeah, I like watching movies. So. And uh, that that was a walk through that. And there's a park behind it as you walk from Louvre to this uh, place where they have the old hotel. I forgot its name. We might have a picture of it in the end and it, it's a very beautiful walk from that park yeah no paris is uh for those of our viewers who haven't been to paris france 
it really is a beautiful, beautiful city, a good walking city. Yes. Plenty of, um, you know, nice wide um, uh, footpaths, footpaths, sidewalks, a lot yes. of parks. Um, a very, you know, if you like to get out there and stretch your legs, it's a, a very good walking city. Yes, it is. With good food. So people like me can make an excuse and say, I walked, you know, 20 so, blocks, it's time for lunch. And, yes. And the food there and the, some of the restaurants there are very beautiful. Just for the experience, going to one of those nicer restaurants is a very, very, very pleasant experience, I would say. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the uh, nice things when you're traveling is to go to all those different restaurants and, you know, enjoy the different cuisine, uh, the service. It, yes. Always nice. And if you're with friends, yeah. all the better. Yes. All the better. You can try the roadside food as well as the elite restaurants and you can enjoy. I know we have a few more shots, but before we finish up, sure. uh, what trips do you have planned for the future? Uh, I'm not sure as of now, but after this, I went to Dubai this, just like last. I was there in the, in the end of December, like 14th December. Maybe you'll I bring think. us the pictures of Dubai. Uh, there are a lot of pictures and I would love to speak about it if... Dubai, did you go to the water park? Oh, let me just have you explain this picture. Yeah, this is the the hotel I was talking about. The Hotel Louvre, which is actually very famous. And actually in the evening, it's kind of a carnival out there. And you can see uh, that guy actually uh, making huge uh, air balloons out of the soap water. And kids enjoying in those. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a very, and you can see like people bubbles, doing different giant, giant bubbles. bubbles. And you can see someone painting a picture there. Yep. And it's it's kind of a carnival atmosphere out there, and everyone is relaxed, enjoying. There's there are nice nice tea shops. You can sit there and watch everyone click pictures like this. Well, this sounds like you had a wonderful, wonderful trip. Yes. And I want to just thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And I hope you'll come back again because I want you to share Dubai with us. Sure. Did you get a chance to take that trip in Dubai with the get on the camels or did you go through the the sand dunes yes, I and did, go up I, and down? And I went to the sand dunes. I went to Burj Khalifa, the tallest building, and I went to Ferrari World. To uh, oh, there's Ferrari World. I was never there. What's that? You get a ride in a Ferrari? Uh, there is. That's the fastest roller coaster in the world, which goes from oh. 0 to 240 kilometers per hour. On that note, Mr. Kalkarni, I thank you. And for our viewers, please share with us your next trip. Thank you very much. Thank you.